In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the design cycle and steps to create effective designs and it starts right now. Hi there, it's Dennis Joshua from Delight Hands TV. If you want to learn how to make creative designs with Photoshop and CorelDRAW, start by clicking the subscribe button and hit on the bell so you won't miss any video. For you to be able to make an effective design, you need to know a list of steps of getting a design from concept to presentation. These steps are known as the design cycle or design pipeline. So let's go right into the design cycle. These steps are briefing, research and brainstorming, thumbnails, production as well as presents. When it comes to the first step which is known as briefing, do not start designing before properly consulting your clients. Though design is fun, but being overexcited and starting to design when you have not followed the briefing step can cost you time and money. You should not jump into a pool before learning how to swim, so why do the same with graphic design? A client's brief is a questionnaire you provide your client with to consult a design once in need. You will however need to adopt it depending on the design tax at hand. The basic topics that need to be addressed in this step are company backgrounds and objectives, the company needs with regards to the design, the company context or ideas they prefer, competitors, the target market, delivery date and time, as well as budget. Let's look at this briefing step, one after the other. The company background is all about obtaining all the company details and make sure you gather appropriate information. Ask of what the company does and what is their values and objectives. If the company is an already existing company, you can always get some information from the internet. Next is the company needs. Definitely, the company should expect something great from you as a professional designer. It is best for you to discover this company needs. To get some insights with regards to what the company needs, ask them the type of design they like. In some instances, the company may tell you, use your active idea. For me, when my client says this, I believe they trust me and they give me a creative freedom. However, the more you get to work with a client, the easier the process become. In the next question of briefing, you will need to know how the company's competition is. You need to stay clear from making similar designs with the company's competitors because you want to stand out. You will also need to determine your client's target market. Who are you actually designing for? Is it for children, adults, men, women, young girls? All these people consider a different design approach. Just as for children, consider using elements like toys. As well as other sets of people, use elements that fit their personality. You just have to depend on your clients for enough briefing. Also, if you find the job pressing always, ask your clients for additional time to your due date. All because you may be going to other designs due to how life turns out. It is better that it is better that way than crossing the due dates without delivering your design. Always stick to deadlines and don't be scared to add more time to do an excellent job. Always create a basic price list before meeting your client so it will make things more official. Your client may not have a set budget. You will need to tell them your price and do not design for free. However, you should charge a design based on your knowledge and experience and also considering the expenses you will cover just to get the design done. These are the seven main elements to consider when briefing your client and that is the first step of the design cycle. Now let's look at research and brainstorming. Start by doing research using the information gathered at the first step. Don't pressure yourself too much to come up with a brand new idea that has never been thought of because it may almost be impossible. Simply get inspiration and personalize your idea from other people's idea, but do not copy a design verbatim. Instead, make it more personalized. Once you have gathered enough research, 
you can start to put your idea to concept. I normally use a small book to conceptualize my ideas. You can always do same. In that book or board, draw out all ideas you get. Even if it looks stupid, draw it all out before going to design with the computer. The next stage of the design cycle is the thumbnail. And this is the stage where you refine your brainstorming idea. This is where you let your imagination to be free. This is a refined way of combining your ideas and finally come up with a finalized hand-drawn concept. Before moving to the digital phase, which is production phase. This is the stage where you put all your ideas on your computer. In this stage, you may find yourself adding more concepts to your design. But don't feel bad cause it's normal and I often do it. And finally, we are in the present phase. This is when you are confident with your work and you will now present it to your clients. Make sure your presentation is appealing as possible. Use mockups to make your presentation more digital and self-explanatory. After all this, always get ready to go back to the research and brainstorming phase as your client may want to make some changes to the design. And this will be the end of this lesson. If there is anything you don't understand, do well to put your ideas on the comments below. And if you have your own suggestions on this video, also put it on the comments. There is a video on your screen, simply click on it to watch how to place your paperback design on a mock-up. Thanks for watching this video and bye!